In this video, I take a look at the 1.43 update to Pimax Play to see if any of the new features improve the quality of life we experience when using the Pimax Crystal Light in iRacing. And as always, all this from an older gamer's perspective. Pimax continually tweaks the Pimax Play software, which controls all of their headsets. In version 1.43, they've added a new utility tool. This is a FPS overlay and an adjustable FOV setting that is supposed to help out with performance. Pimax have also done some bug fixing and some performance tweaks, which is good to hear. But does the adjustable FOV actually make a difference in iRacing on the Pimax Crystal Light? And can we actually track that difference when using the FPS utility tool that Pimax have now supplied to us? Let's dig in and find out. I'm gonna keep digging. The FPS utility tool. The new utility tool does offer some useful data about what's going on in your headset while you are in VR. This is displayed as readings for FPS, average FPS, CPU and GPU usage and memory usage for both of those. Although for some reason the memory usages of both of these are in the wrong place, but never mind, it's an early version. To display this utility tool, you should avoid hunting for a toggle switch in the Pimax Play app on your desktop. You won't find one because it's not there. What you do need to do is put on your headset and open the Pimax Play interface inside the headset itself, either with the Pi key on the controller or using the volume if you have the controller setting in the Pimax settings toggled on. Once you bring up the Pimax Play interface, just click the plus symbol here next to the monitor icon and select utility from any of the options that spring up. This will then display the utility tool in VR and you can resize this overlay to suit your needs. There isn't any kind of opacity changes available on this FPS overlay a bit of a shame. Don't forget to pin it before you enter your SIM, otherwise you're just not going to be able to see it when you're inside the SIM. Once all of that's done, in the SIM you are using, you will see the FPS stats that this utility can display, although you can't move it again unless you jump back to the Pimax Play interface. The main drawback of this system, you can probably see it now, is the overlay cannot be recorded via OBS with the OpenXR mirror. What you are seeing here is something I cribbed from a Pimax video because I found it next to impossible to record either the process of opening the utility tool or showing in action by putting a camera up against the lens of the Pimax crystal light. I'm just not adapt to that sort of thing, <laughs> so it didn't happen. Not being able to record the FPS stats displayed on this utility tool of course makes the whole thing less useful for benchmarking than we would all like. In fact, without the ability to record these stats and just rely on yourself remembering what was going on makes this tool more anecdotal than actually useful. If you just want to monitor a live performance in a crowded VR race, it's handy to have, I guess, and it's easy enough to use. But if you are recording sessions for benchmarking, it's not very useful at all. Certainly not when compared with other overlay options available to VR users. For example, the overlay in the OpenXR toolkit. So, Interesting, but ultimately the utility tool is just not very useful. Not in this incarnation. <coughs> Adjustable field of view. VR performance often improves if you reduce the area your GPU needs to render. Culling peripheral vision or reducing the field of view is a good example of how to do this. Other tools in the VR world like the FOV tangent multiplier in the Oculus Debug tool or the foveated rendering settings in OpenXR Toolkit and of course iRacing's native fixed foveated rendering already do this and they do it really well. However, this version is a native field of view reduction in the Pimax headset itself, which in theory should be better than the other methods I have mentioned. And indeed, in my testing with the Crystal Light, switching the FOV from normal to narrow led to a noticeable FPS boost clearly seen on crowded grids in iRacing. Like 
Daytona, for example, always a problematic track. But there's a catch. The narrow preset really is narrow. Although it only reduces the FOV horizontally by 10%, this still feels far too constricting, like you're losing far too much of that wonderful display the Pimax Crystal Light offers. Now let's be clear, a reduction in the horizontal only is a good thing because as I've shown in other videos, adjusting the FOV on the vertical axis can push the iRacing native fixed foveated rendering too far up the display and become a big immersion breaker. So Pimax have got that bit of the equation correct. What's missing is the ability to decide for ourselves how much we want to reduce the field of view. Rather than a preset, what we really need is a slider or the ability to enter a decimal value as seen in the Oculus Debug tool. If I am having performance issues with a specific track in iRacing or any other sim, I think that I would rather drop the refresh rate to 72 hertz or apply any of the other performance tweaks that I have outlined in this video here rather than use the narrow field of view preset supplied by Pimax. That sounds a bit brutal, I know, and I'm sure for anyone running a lower tier system who doesn't want to reduce the refresh rate or their graphic settings, this could be just the tool they are looking for. I am hoping in future versions, Pimax adds some adjustability to this setting, even if it's just offering a greater selection of preset options rather than what we've got now, which is just the one, just this narrow preset option. I can't really call normal a preset as that's just FOV adjustment switched off. So I would say the FOV adjustment preset is a little more useful than the utility tool, but it needs much more flexibility if it is to be useful to the majority instead of the minority. That's harsh. Conclusions. This video may have come across as a tad on the negative side, but this update is still, in my opinion, despite the limitations of those features on offer, a positive step towards the further development of the Pimax Play software. Yes, the FPS overlay and the FOV preset might not be quite as functional as we would like, but it's clearly early days in their development and there is a lot of hope for improvement. As I said earlier, the changes don't need to be massively radical to start hitting the mark. If the overlay could just be set to show up in OBS or another capture tool and the FOV tool offered sliders or more presets. This would amount to some really cool tools for VR users to use. So credit where credit is due, Pimax is tackling VR performance issues rather than just ignoring them. And that is good news for all Pimax users. Even if users of Pimax software like myself might need to wait until Pimax have this software in a state that's a little more useful than what's currently on offer. Comment below if you intend to use any of the new features and how you think they will improve your VR experience. One last thing to mention before I close off this video, it's that time of year, Black Friday, and Pimax have their own Black Friday madness sale. You can get $70 off a Pimax Crystal Light and also get free shipping if you order right now. There's an affiliate link code below where you can get an extra 3% off as well using the code Older Gamer. In the meantime, I hope you found this video helpful and until the next one, race clean and I'll see you on track. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the like button and if you haven't already done so, subscribe. Click the little bell icon if you want to be notified of any future videos.